Hi, it's Larry Herb, Xbox's Major Nelson. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast. Let me bring the whole gang in here, and we're all ready to go. Where's hmm. Jeff? Jeff's not here. So uh, just just you we and I this week. We kicked him off now. Yeah, well, yeah. You, 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 well, you know what we're going to do then? If it's just going to be you and I, then we're going to do something mm-hmm. because we, you and I have something in common, and we know what that is, right? So let's go to the two box. I already know what's coming. There it is, baby. <laughs> Syracuse Orange. Nice. Since we are both Syracuse yes. University graduates, it's uh, wanted to put that in. Of course, the problem is it clashes terribly with the green, but uh, <laughs> look at like your name's all messed up there. Got to fix that. But it's good to see you. It's good to see you, Rebecca. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's been, I had a nice week off, but it's good to be back. Well, we're happy to have you back. In fact, not only are you back, but um, I spy a new microphone under your chin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hope I sound better. Um, now I feel like a real podcasting <laughs> person. Well, you do. So. Sound, I mean, that, the, the the comments uh, in the in the YouTube comments and on Twitter were very nice. And people were like, oh, let's get her a new mic. I know we've been working on that since you joined the show. We finally got one because you know these mics are tough to find because everybody's you know working from home and wants to up their quality. So yeah. you've got, it looks like you've got the Elgato Wave there, right? That's a great mic. Yes, it's very nice. I like it a lot. And it's nice and small, too. So you can pack it with me. Compact and it's good to go. Anyway, it's great to see you. Jeff is mm-hmm. not with us this week, as as you can tell by the uh, the uh, empty green, uh, the empty green box over here. So we'll uh, see. <laughs> no, Jeff. No, Jeff. Uh, so when Jeff's not here, let's just agree to do this format with the orange. I, I agree. For all, for all of you, that, <laughs> as I said, as I just said a moment ago, uh, Sir, uh, Rebecca and I graduated Syracuse University, not together. We're quite different, but we were in the same new house school in communication. So we are, we are go orange. And I uh, figure we'll yes. drop that as a background. In fact, that's why I was so excited when I remember joining Xbox and we were launching Xbox Live back in the day. I was so excited when the color was orange. Remember, it used to be like that, that crazy Xbox Live orange. <laughs> <sighs> oh yeah uh now everything is just green it's no. the same shade of green for yeah, the last one, 10 big, years. one yeah. big thing of green but you had you've had a busy week i mean we'll talk about what we're playing but you had a busy week doing some minecraft stuff would you tell me about that or tell tell, tell everybody else here about that yeah so i have i have a bunch of games on my backlog that i've been wanting to play but right. um you know with I, I went to go visit some family now that everyone's vaccinated and then uh after i got back we were in full swing of getting ready for our first ever minecraft virtual creator summit and so minecraft has this huge community of youtubers influencers twitch streamers facebook gamers um and so we brought them all together for a virtual summit we uh you know did like a live stream and it was it was a lot of work but it was a lot of fun um we used to do it in person in stockholm and it would be really amazing we like rented this uh one year we rented there was this island that's an amusement park in stockholm i I remember that i remember that that was was really cool yeah Yeah, um, we took like speed boats through the Swedish like sound or whatever that is in Stockholm. Um, We've done some really fun stuff with them, but they create really amazing content. And obviously people really enjoy their content. Um, And it's just been awesome to get to have that opportunity to like mingle with them and hear how things have been going with them and thank them for their work. So yeah, we were super busy with that the last couple of weeks. Um, But it's good timing because we have a lot of fun stuff coming up for Minecraft in the next month or two. yeah, it's funny. I was I was recording something with um oh god I can't remember her name who does uh Minecraft because a lot of people you know certainly people that listen to this show know that Minecraft is you know it's a massive game it's one of the biggest games in the world but there's also this other part of Minecraft that a lot of people forget about which is the Minecraft EDU part which which unless you mm-hmm. have kids in school or you're actively involved in the educational environment you may not know. Can you explain some of that to me? Because I had a chance to chat with the head of Minecraft EDU uh, yesterday. It was, it was yeah. great. Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, so Minecraft, actually, we have an entirely separate edition of the game called Minecraft Education Edition. Yep. And it's technically only available through, like, um, educational licenses, so, like, teachers. And we have some, like, departments of education around the world who are, like, licensed to use it. Yep. Um, but we release a lot of new, like, lessons in, like, history and art and science and math and engineering and really complicated stuff. Um, but we've actually started releasing some of those lessons in the main game, too. So we have an education category in the in-game marketplace so that that way a lot of the like kids who are stuck at home these days still have something like educational that they can play through um so it's it's pretty cool 
Yeah. Yeah. It's it's great Big because like, a, like you said, if you don't have, you know, if you don't have a relationship or a, a license to look at the EDU version, you can still take a look at that content on your regular Minecraft because this content yeah. is, and give me, exa could you give us an example of just a high level, a couple of the pieces of content? Because this is stuff that's really yeah. amazing. Yeah, so we came out with the um, a good trouble category last year, which is based around like different like civil rights movement throughout history. So like there's the U.S. civil rights movement, obviously, but then also uh, Malala in Pakistan um, pushing for girls' education. Um, there's uh, the British suffragettes movement pushing for women's right to vote. Um, there's another lesson on Mahatma Gandhi in India. But then we also have some other like science and technology ones too that are really cool. Like there's one that takes you through the International Space Station. There's one that explores like the anatomy of the human eye. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. Like I, I did a couple of the hour of code tutorials, like learning how to code. Um, spoiler alert, not good at it. So I'm going to stick to what I'm good at. But, but, <laughs> but, you, but you were um, trying and you were learning. That's the most important thing. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but there's some really cool stuff in there. So I would, I would recommend checking it out. Even as an adult, you can learn something. And like some of these lessons are really detailed. So. Yeah, it, it's really it's a really great um, it's a really great resource, you know, both for education folks. And then if you don't just to go in there, if you just have kids and you want to you want to check it out, go go do that. So anyway, yeah. So you had a busy. Yes. What do you? By the way, we, we usually talk about what we're playing, and I want to talk about what mm -hmm. we're playing. What are you playing? What's your backlog look like? And what's what's uh, what's in your most recently used? <laughs> <laughs> I think my most recently used is still Minecraft. So when I'm admittedly, when I'm really busy, I tend to just kind of hang out in creative mode. And I've been working on, um, I've been building a house into a mountainside, and it's going to have a really big, like sprawling garden. And so I've been working on that for a few months now. But um, I have a lot of games on my backlog, like I have Spirit, uh, Spirit Fair downloaded. And yeah. so I was just chatting with a friend this week who was highly recommending it. So I really want to play that. Um, but then there's also a couple games coming to Xbox Game Pass that I really want to try too. And so it's, I don't know, I think this is the problem you get to when you're an adult. It's like, I have all these games I want to play and I finally have the money to buy them, but I don't have any of the time to play them because I'm so busy with work. So, well, that, that's actually the uh, other, the other, you know, kind of hidden secret of working in the games industry is once you get in the games industry, <laughs> start work, you just don't have any time. You just don't, you have no time yeah. to play games. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I'm looking at my most recently used, I, Got um, Psychonauts 2. I've got an uh, interview with Tim Schafer. Mm. Uh, we're going to talk about Psychonauts oh, 2, nice. and it's on the Game Informer uh, cover, and there's a whole bunch of There's like 30 pages of it in Game Informer this month, so we're going to talk to Tim later on. So I was, I was 30 checking pages. Out, yeah, Psychonauts 2. Um, but also like Judgment. I mean, I just, to, to your point, I just haven't had much time uh, either because I've been working on a lot of other things as well. I can't really talk about those things yet, but I have been working on a, lo a lot of other things as well, so my gaming time has been has been rather limited, unfortunately. You know how that is. Yeah. Yes. Well, I have I have one more thing too that I wanted to mention that I've been working on. So next week, um, and we can chat about it more next week too. But we're releasing the Hidden Depths DLC for Minecraft Dungeons, okay. and we're going to have an anniversary event because the game launched on May twenty sixth of last year. So it's already been an entire year with five DLCs and tons of free updates. So wow. um, if this is a good time to jump back in. But yeah, so next week is when all of that kicks off. Um, so stay tuned. We've got, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do news in just a minute, but I wanted to, you know, we, we, we've got a pretty tight show today because I've got a couple interviews and Jeff isn't here to kind of tell us about, wax on about <laughs> coffee and all the things he waxes on about. You're yeah. welcome to do that, by the coffee way. I want to be, wanna be very clear. Uh, but we've got uh, Knockout City uh, is coming to Xbox Game Pass and we're going to talk to uh, Gula Bala, who's, uh, who's, who's, his team is working on that, which it's, it's, a, it's a dodgeball game. Do you remember playing dodgeball when you were in uh, like middle school? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> So we're going to talk we're about that far apart in age. Oh, Everyone I know, I know. still plays dodgeball. <laughs> dodgeball is one of those universal things. That's why hopefully it's going to make a great game. And then I'm going to talk mm -hmm. to Tim Schafer and Ben Reeve. Uh, Tim Schafer, of course, for Psychonauts 2, um, which is coming out later this year. And then uh, Ben Reeves from Game Informer, because Ben had the chance to spend a lot of time with uh, with uh, with the team. So we're going to talk. With, those are the two interviews this week. So I've got those kind of queued up, ready to go. I didn't know if you had anything else you want to talk about before we get into those. Mm, I'll save it for the news, but All right, I'm, so I'm excited to see the interviews. Psychonauts 2 is on the cover of Game Informer this month. Joining me is uh, Ben Reeves from Game Informer. Ben, good to see you. Hey, how's it going? It, is, go here. it is going great. And then, of course, in the middle box is the legendary Tim Schafer. Tim, how are you? 
I'm, I feel very legendary now that you've introduced me so finally. By the way, we, are we, Ben and I were just chat, chatting off uh, before we started recording about your your epic lighting and the and the red background there. It's I don't know what it is, but it's it's uh it's, men, it it's menacing. Me I sit in, I'm in a room that's completely red. It keeps me calm and and, and keeps me creative. Nothing does. No, I does just it. moved. This is a blank office. Is that is that is that actually your office or is that, is that maybe like the bathroom or something? <laughs> How dare you talk about this? <laughs> this, this is, is how he intimidates the press. I, I won't say any more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I'm and, sitting on the toilet right now. Only the best for this. That's Psychonauts two. Anything can happen. Uh, ben, you've got uh, Psychonauts two on the cover. Tell us a little bit about um, mm-hmm. you know what what we can expect if for those people that are getting their hands on it now or checking it out. Yeah, this is a. Uh, we treated this. We went all out for this. I'll just say that. Uh, normally, we do a cover story and we'll do like you know twelve to fourteen pages, and we certainly did that with Psychonauts. But then we went above and beyond the Call of Duty here, <laughs> which really was uh, props to you guys, props to Double Fine there for giving us access. But we have a big feature where we talk all about Psychonauts and the journey to create the game, which has been a long story. Uh, but then we dive into Tim's background a little bit, talk about his time in LucasArts. My colleague, Blake Hester, he wrote a couple of fine features as well, just explaining the history of Double Fine. So we kind of dedicate the whole issue to Double Fine and their work and and why their games are special, because they are. They, they certainly are. Tim, You, uh, that, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of press. That's a lot of ink, as they used to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what, tell us a little bit about what you showed for Psychonauts 2. And then, Ben, I want to talk about some of those other segments that you guys did in, in, in the magazines. But, but, Tim, tell us about what you showed. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it is an exciting uh, amount of uh, uh, just l- focus on the, the company, and I think we showed them a lot. We showed them everything. I mean, we gave them a, you know really full access because um, we love attention. And uh, specifically, I think we really focused on showing them details about the gameplay of um, the mind of Hall's Fourth Sight, which mm-hmm. is this mind that is a combination of her memories of medical school and plus her interest in gambling. <laughs> which uh, Raz, Raz may or may not have had some uh, in, uh, influence on with his psychic uh, intrusions. We have a little bit of a B roll here. So if you could just kind of tell us what we're what we're seeing here, because this is uh, this is inter- this is the first time we're seeing this, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is uh, the inside of Hollis's minds. Once Raz has uh, kind of uh, been messing around in there with his new powers. In the game, you have some of the old psychic powers from the first game, and also a new power called mental connection, where you can connect various thoughts in uh, someone's mind. And um, Raz was uh, trying to achieve his goals by um, uh, making some connections in her mind. He accidentally makes her way too interested in gambling. And so it, it gets uh, it gets mixed up with all her memories of medical school to create this uh, environment where it's a hospital where doctors are, are rolling the dice to decide how the patients will, you know, live or die. And it's a very, it's one of the kind of um, strange juxtaposed uh, themes that I think Psychonauts games are known for. I say Psychonauts games. There's three of them, but I can play games. So um, the franchise. This is the, this is the, yeah, the franchise. This is one of the uh, um, one of the levels that really ex- exemplifies that, and that's why we shared it with our friends at Game Informer. Hey, there were once only three Star Warses. That's that's true, and now now there's there's a, there's a multi billion dollar empire. Ben, tell us, uh, but you got to play the game. You got to play, you know, certainly play this and 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 kind of get a broader look. But I want to really talk about the coverage you have. You you teased it a little bit at the top and told us broadly what it was all about. But what are some of the things we can expect as we're reading this? Yeah, well, when we go all in on what Tim just talked about on Hollis and the new mental connection power, how it works, that kind of stuff, uh, and then some of those other features we talk about. Tim's history in the industry, because I think he has a really interesting journey just starting out at LucasArts. Uh, LucasArts being a really weird, quirky place in the industry. You know, it was an opportunity for George Lucas to spend some of the money he was making and didn't know what else to do with. And so they turns out they one of the things they did was make games, and Tim had the unique opportunity to be a part of that. And I think that's a really cool, unique, like little part of the industry that we don't always hear about. And you know, Tim's journey was super interesting. It sounds like it was a magical time for sure. T- Tim, I was, I was looking at the article and it looked like, and I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but there was some, some actual, looked like there was like an interview, some notes from one of the interviews you were having, or maybe it was uh, the job posting. T- t- what was that? Cause I mean, you gotta see this thing. <laughs> yeah, I think we gave them all our documents. Like I remember being on the phone with, I, I was just out of school and I was really nervous and, I can't imagine all, it's all my dreams coming together, like video games, yep. uh, 
you know, Lucas and I was, and, you know, Star Wars, of course, and I like Star Wars, but I really liked the games that Lucas had made. They're all these on the Atari, the uh, Rescue and Fractalus and um, Ball Blazer. And uh, so I was sitting in the interview, I'm all nervous. And so I doodled and I found that paper, like where I had written down all the, you know, all the names and, and phone numbers during the interview, like someone does. But um, I also think it's, uh, you have the cover letter in there, don't you, Ben? Yeah, the cover letter. I mean, this is this is old news, but uh, it's not like breaking news or anything. But yeah, you you wrote a cover letter <laughs> to LucasArts because you didn't think you were going to get the job, and then you're like, well, what if I turn my cover letter to make it look like a an old point and click adventure game? And yeah, and that's I what did it. The, I assume you got the job. <laughs> yeah, because I ended up when I was talking about my favorite Lucas games, I I mentioned Ball Blaster, and I said I love Ball Blaster so much, and they're like, that's the name of the game when it was pirated, and I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> awkward and so i went all out with my uh cover letter and, and made a um a fake text adventure that maybe that's what did it who it, knows that, yeah that i assume so yeah is because yeah, yeah. when i first started interviewing you i was like oh i love telenauts and you're like Tell them, that's not what the game's called <laughs> so i i, I would be so honored if someone pirated the game and changed the name to telenauts i'd be like that's that's a lot of effort lot when of effort. uh uh, Tim, you know, maybe we'd like to have that point and click game show up in one of your games as a, as an Easter egg, or maybe it already is. Maybe not. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Um, it's a good ben, idea, though. Ben, I want to talk to you about some of the, you know, you talked about the main Psychonauts 2, which again is in, in Game Informer this month, but there's also some other, you have some other pieces that some of your colleagues wrote about. Tell us about what some of those are. Yeah, Blake Hester, he was my wingman for this whole thing. And honestly, he he could have done it himself. He's just a pro. Uh, he did a deep dive. One of the things he did was looked at some of the you know more notable games on Double Fine's gameography. And he kind of looked across the years at what they did. And then the other piece he wrote is a more in-depth dive on the history of Double Fine. So kind of picking up from my article on Tim Schaefer's LucasArts years, you can kind of read through the whole history and then read up about Double Fine which they started out in a garage in San Francisco. Actually, correction, they started out in a haunted clog shop, apparently, and they moved to a smoky garage. So I don't know which one's, a, is that a step up or a step down, Tim? Well, I it, well the, the, the clog shop was really uh, nice, but it was very small and really expensive, and we got kicked out of it for, we don't need to go into that. But um, uh, the garage was really convenient because you could park your car right next to your desk. But there's this one day when we were all like um, almost passing out. We're like, I'm really sleepy. Are you sleepy? Well, I have a headache. What's going on? <laughs> and uh, it turned out someone had this old uh, sports car that had a leaking gas tank and there was this puddle of gas under his car. And we were all just like, oh. You're all oh. inhaling fumes. Yep. yep, yep. Yeah, people and, would just uh, drive so in. They, I, I didn't work there, yeah. but according to you guys, people would just drive the car in right up to next to somebody's desk, get out and walk in. It's like, oh. I guess it's convenient if I need to run to lunch, but I, it's a testament to how um, exciting it is when you're starting up a company. Everything just seems cool. Everything's cool. Like, oh my god, this is this is so great. We can park next to our desk. I, that's what I thought. I thought maybe right. the employees didn't think it was that good, but um, I mean, parking downtown San Francisco, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty that's pretty uh, magical. So when you, you when you were uh, starting in the garage, and that's a great San Francisco Silicon Valley story, as we've all talked, we've all seen the. Uh, the garages that Google started in and Apple and HP and so on and so forth. Do, do you ever go back by that garage, Tim, and just kind of take a look at it? Is, is there still, is there yeah. still a gas stain on the driveway? <laughs> <laughs> there is, I mean, it's locked. I've been, I've poked my head through the bars. It's like, it's like a, it's it turned back into its natural state of like being like a, a pipe fitting <laughs> shop or something like that. And so <laughs> I look in there. I mean, the real, the clog shop is now a hair salon and my wife got her hair cut in the corner of the room that used to be my desk where my desk was. So, so it's wow. all full circle now. You can't you know, walk into a, a, a hair salon and be like, Hey everybody, guess what? My company started here. And they're like, we don't take walk-ins. The circle, <laughs> the circle of life, the circle of urban life, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that is the circle. It goes, Clock shop to video game uh, developer to hair salon to pipe fitting shop to, and then it just repeats it just over keeps, and over. Keeps again. going around and around. We got a little and the bit goes up. We got a little bit more footage here that we were showing a little bit earlier. Um, I was wondering if you can kind of walk us through, Tim. You, you, you set this up already, but uh, there's there's a lot going on mm -hmm. here. I mean, in terms of the characters and the skills and some of the game, tell us about it. Yeah, there's some old and some new here. The, the first game you recognize the um, 
the sensor. This is a sensor which is a part of everyone's mind that gets rid of thoughts that don't belong, and Raz doesn't belong in his mind, so it's trying to get rid of him. Um, and you'll see a new enemy, which is the bad idea. The bad idea makes these light bulbs appear over its head and then throws them at you and they explode. But if you um, look at this gameplay, you'll see how what we try to do in this game is really integrate the psychic powers with the combat in a deeper way. So you can use that uh, metal connection there to kind of tether the enemy towards you and uh, where you can melee attack them. You can use your telekinesis ability to pick up the bombs they're throwing and throw them back at them. Here he's using pyrokinesis to burn this adorable little dog. It's really, it's just a psychic animal. No animals are actually hurt in the making of the game. Which is important to point out. What uh, what kind of... Uh, I think of... that's actually true. I think that's true, yeah. No, no animals. Do you want to wait on that? Do you have the little tag at the? Do you have the uh, the note like at the end of a movie from the SPCA that that it was made okay with them, or you didn't get that? No. Okay. I, I'm willing to say it. <laughs> okay. on the record, no animals were hurt. What? Uh, what? You know, we talk a little bit of the gameplay, but there's there's a, there's a lot of different style of gameplays in this in this game, right? <clears throat> yeah. There's a uh, um, platforming. We Raz is a trained acrobat, so he has a lot of skills of climbing poles and swinging on uh, poles and, and you know, a lot of the um, deep platform mechanics, but also, uh, you know, it's an adventure game. So there's, there's puzzles, there's dialogue with characters like in some of the old LucasArts adventure games, dialogue trees, and then there's combat and, um, and action in it too. Ben, you've that was the coolest everyone. thing about the original. Yeah. I started to jump in, but that was the coolest thing about the original game was like, you know, every level was different. You know, one level you're a kaiju knocking down cities and one you're exploring some crazy suburban area. And the one thing that I really took away during my time talking to you guys is you really wanted to bring that back. And, you know, every level has its own theme. Every level has unique gameplay stuff, which I'm sure is just a pain to make. But for a player, for for a fan, like that's exciting because every every I don't know what to expect, you know, from one minute to the next. Yeah, we do really uh, try to make every level have its own art style and a gameplay twist, you know, something different than all the other levels. And it's part of the reason it takes so long to make these games. But um, I think it, it, it's uh, I think it's really important. It's part of the big appeal. You never yet. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. It's set inside the human mind, a lot of it. So, like, we can do anything we want is why it's so creatively inspiring to make a game like this and fun to play. That's why it's important to point out um, that, you know, it's not like you're taking a, a character and with a weapon and you're just kind of designing levels. You have to re go through and, you know, have a new look and a new style and a new way to play. Certainly, you've got the main character, but I'm just saying the levels are just vastly different. Uh, so it's also like each level is its own game, right? Uh, it's, it feels that way for sure. And um yeah, and, and definitely its own look and its own, you know, it's a narrative game. So there's a lot of meaning to the story and and what the characters, you know, they hopefully really pull you in and you feel like these characters are real to you and you get really involved in um, their emotional state and stuff, which is not really like a, a typical platforming thing. But it's it's there as deep as you want to get into it. You don't have to really totally psychoanalyze all the characters, but um, we try and put a lot of thought into making all of that uh, solid and, 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 you know, uh, and fun to explore if you're into that. Ben, you've got a, um, you know, you've got so much coverage in the, in the Game Informer. How can people, you know, how do people absorb this coverage? How do they find it? What do they need to do to, to grab this stuff? Yeah, go to GameInformer.com slash Psychonauts2. That's our main coverage hub for everything we're going to write about. We have, you know, different deep dive video dives that include some of the footage you just saw, but like stuff we'll, we'll explore mental connection a little bit more in depth. We'll talk more about the characters. We have several interview interviews, not just with Tim, but with other people on the team. Uh, and then we do one of my favorite interviews was the rapid fire interview we did with Tim, which is always a good time. So it's an opportunity for a lot of jokes in there. So it'll be a good time if you come watch that one. So yeah, gameinformer.com slash psychonauts2. All right, Tim, we've got to wrap it up, uh, Tim and Ben. But Tim, uh, people are at probably saying, well, where do I, how do I play this? Where do I find it? And you're going to answer the question like this. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> if you want to play X, uh, Psychonauts 2, it's coming out uh, later this year on Xbox and through Xbox Game Pass and on uh, Windows 10 PC. That's all you need to know. All right, that, gentlemen, thanks so much for your time today. Ben Reeves from Game Informer. Check out the great coverage. And it's not just a story. There's a whole bunch of other stories as well about uh, about the amazing Double Fine. And then Tim Schaefer, always good to see you, Tim. Thank you for your time. And thank you for letting us into your red room. <laughs> this is, I told you, my bathroom. You're listening to KO City Pirate Radio. I'm taking over the airwaves to welcome all you new brawlers out there. Lace up your shoes, tie back your hair, and kiss your mama goodbye. This is Knockout City. 
Oh, when I saw that Knockout City trailer back in March with the pirate radio DJ and the vertical city, the colorful visuals, even the logo, I was reminded of the original Jet Set Radio for me. That's a, that's a huge compliment. I'm a huge fan of that. But Knockout City, it's not rollerblading. This is dodgeball. And these players can do a lot more than Ben Stiller. It's available now on Xbox consoles and through Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Here to tell us all about it is Guha Bala, the co-founder of Valen Studios, uh, coming in from upstate New York. I don't get to say that too often. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Jeff. Uh, very happy to have you here. So I, look, like a lot of kids, I, I played dodgeball growing up. I was pretty good at it. Helped that I was super skinny. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I thought was just so fun about the game in general was like how you quickly shift from from defense to offense. From oh, I don't want to get hit to oh, I got the ball and now the tables have turned and it happens very quickly. So I'm just curious, like how do you capture that in in a in a game about dodgeball? You know what we wanted to do uh, right out out of the gate when we started the early prototyping for Knockout City, that was before Knockout City was Knockout City, was to make a different kind of action game. And uh, we thought a good place to start was, hey, let's look at ball uh, ball games uh, and make a game about throwing and catching. And, you know, as simple as that. It turned out that, uh, you know, do uh, like a dodgeball inspiration, uh, that's much more than dodgeball as we understand it, gave us a perfect context for it. And we thought that this would really give a rise to a different type of game experience because when you're throwing and catching is very different than playing a shooter. You know, because if you're attacked, you can defend yourself immediately and then turn that action right by uh, right uh, uh, onto the person that sort of aimed at you in the first place. And um, it also give ri gives rise to a number of uh, new phenomenon too when you're playing socially uh, because you can pass. Um, you can actually work as a team in a totally different way. And so passing allows you to position yourself. Passing allows you to um, assist in a unique way uh, to team members. Um, and uh, with ball games, it really lend themselves to sports style gameplay structures where a reversal of fortune can be very dramatic, uh, can really lead to those clutch moments. Anyway, this all didn't come through a big master plan. It just all came, started with saying, can we make a game about throwing and catching? And then we did successive prototypes for over 18 months and really to be able to nail that core gameplay feel where you get the sense of, hey, I'm doing something different and I feel really connected to the action. I feel something social, a way to play with my buddies, uh, with my friends in a manner that you know is uh, feels really fresh uh, and can result in these kind of dramatic reversals where I get to show off my skill uh, and I can do it in style. So that's actually eventually what gave form to what Knockout City is today. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Like if you were making a new basketball game or a new shooter, uh, you've got a lot of sort of things that you could build off of. Like, oh, we like a little bit of this and mm -hmm. we like a little bit of that. But I can't remember ever playing a dodgeball game. So it, it, you really are having to build this uh, from the ground up, which I think is really interesting. Now, so many games today are they're they're all about offense as we talked about like but it's nonstop shooting or attacking. So it's it's could you shoot this person more accurately or more f or faster than they can shoot me and then you know one of us survives like two knights you know tilting at each other and and jousting. Um, but and I, and I think players are kind of comfortable with that. They're used to that. That's so many games. But how how should players really be thinking about when they don't have the ball? What should they be doing? Where, where should their mindset be and how can they help their team? Well, you know, some people come from the school of thought that the best uh, defense is more offense. Uh, and it can work. It can work. But actually, uh, in Knockout City, as you play, you quickly realize that, okay, there's individual skill and there's team skill. So when it comes to individual skill, you can master the throwing, the fake throws, the anticipation of your opponent's moves. Uh, and then figure out how to be able to get to the ball spawn, spawn points, intercept the attacks, uh, and then keep a full-on press. But you quickly realize that the team that has a better team dynamic uh, dominates. So you're going on the offense, and uh, you get flanked. And you get flanked by a player that doesn't have a ball but get, receives a quick pass. So it's harder to anticipate. 
Uh, and so you quickly realize that all offense, especially in a situation where you're facing a coordinated team, not a good idea. And you learn to be able to learn, uh, learn to be able to assess the position of your own teammates, the position of the opponents, where the actual balls and the ammo are. And in Knockout City, there are lots of crazy balls, uh, lots of different ball varieties, each with unique properties. So you learn the characteristics behind those things. And it gives you all the tools for sort of emergent, both offensive and defensive team play. And that's what really makes it exciting. Yeah, I always thought of, you know, playing as a kid, uh, really being focused on like those one-on-one experiences. So so mm-hmm. teamwork is this important. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, about communication. Like Mm -hmm. uh, these days, I don't want to keep my microphone on that often, or I'm playing with my kid. I don't know who's going to jump into, into, into game chat, or there might be two of us. And then we, we party up with a third person, but we're, we're in a party. And I really love games like, like apex that allow me to have like sort of this nonverbal communication with like a ping function. So how are you handling folks that may have their mic off or they can't chat or they they don't have a microphone at all? How do they communicate uh, with their other players? Well, you know, one of the things that was really important to us was a um, notion of uh, healthy competition, uh, a sense of kind of joyful competition. And we wanted to see what we could do to be able to minimize toxicity. And so just from a chat enablement standpoint, you really need to be in the same group to be able to do the voice chat um, in the first place. Uh, and, uh, you know, while voice chat is available on all systems, inclu- uh, all, all systems and really is a great part of, you know, team play, uh, we also have a series of emotes, pass to me, or uh, ball up. Actually, one of the cool things in Knockout City is that you yourself can become a ball. And so coordinating these moves, beca- uh, you could do, there are a variety of nonverbal te- uh, techniques to do it, as well as verbal techniques to be able to do it. Uh, there are lots of gameplay mechanics and incentives to do it as well. So, for example, if you pass, you immediately charge the ball up one level. And so that gives you a little bit of an edge in terms of throw speed uh, when you're doing that. If you pass a team player that's already balled up, um, that person immediately overcharges and can go into an ultimate throw. Uh, and so it's a variety of both voice-based com- uh, you know, chat in your group. Uh, there's uh, nonverbal cues through emotes. Uh, and uh, also mechanics that consistently reinforce sort of team play. So I I like sports games, but I will say most Mm -hmm. of the time um, I play FIFA or NBA sitting next to my brother, uh, like on the sofa, he'll come by and we'll we'll play some sports games. Because online, my experiences have honestly been a a bit mixed, sometimes lag, sometimes people quit, whatever whatever it might be. But um, I read about an interesting way that Valen Studios is, is handling latency to like definitively determine like did the ball hit you or didn't it? So do you, do you mind explaining how that works? Yeah, I mean, so to manage sort of fair online play and a good online play experience, there's lots of different systems that we have, uh, but specifically in terms of um, uh, making a competitive ball-based game playable uh, over the internet. Uh, we had to kind of take a totally different approach to what most multiplayer systems do today. Um, and, and this is also the reason why we said, hey, look, why isn't a, a game as simple as throw and catch been done successfully before uh, with scalable online play? And that's really because you and I could be playing. You know, I throw a ball. Uh, on my side, it shows that I hit. On your side, because your latency behavior is going to be a little different than mine, you may have dodged. So what actually happened? And so uh, we take a server authoritative model, as other, uh, other games do, the ser- let the server decide. So the server is essentially the umpire in this case, what actually happened in the game. Now, for you and me looking at it, we don't want to call after the, after the fact. We need to see it in real time. What actually happened on the server happens on our local units as well. And so we developed our engine Viper uh, and our engine language uh, vScript to be able to have a general purpose reversible computation model. What that essentially does is it says, okay, the server th- saw uh, the hit uh, and it will roll back the simulation on both of our um, systems. Uh, and so, you know, for you, that's one rollback. For me, that's another uh, one more rollback 
on every system, the number of players means that number of rollbacks, and we all do it within a single frame. Uh, so this kind of general purpose technique has never been practiced in games before. And actually, in general competition, it's very new uh, as well. But the reason why we came up with it is not to be able to invent some new technology. It's to be able to have a fair competitive game that involves throwing and catching. Well, once we get used to that, uh, maybe you might want to license that to like international soccer. So we don't have to take like four minutes to figure out if a guy is a millimeter offside because uh, it's a thing. They don't even they don't even get it right after taking all that time. Yeah, so, I, think uh, I like I like the sound of this. Yeah, it yeah, is. So yeah, if you could yeah, do this I in a frame. Um... I, just say keep it in mind. You know, FIFA, I know I'm sure a lot of professional soccer players are watching the show. Referee Mike Dean. Uh yeah, please go ahead and uh, take a look at this at this V script. Yeah, very interesting to see that. Last thing uh I wanted to talk about was uh customization. Uh a lot of a lot of online games of, of course you want to customize your character and stand out but at launch i i can i scarcely can think of a, a game that has more options than knockout city do you mind just talking a little bit about what you've got ready for people on here on day one so knockout city is not only about skill it's also about style uh we have so many customizations to be able to help players express themselves and actually all of these items are either earnable directly through progression that's included with uh, in, for Xbox uh, players through Game Pass Ultimate, uh, uh, through the uh, um, um, uh, through the uh, standard edition that's available, you know, at launch. So there's essentially a 900 tier progression system, and as you progress it, uh, you can grind for holobox to be able to redeem in the item store. Uh, that unlocks these cosmetics uh, or that will entitle you to these cosmetics. Or you could just play for through progression where you'll unlock all of those items as well. Uh, now, one of the things that we lear uh, learned early on with Knockout City is you're playing. Uh, and uh, we started with these nondescript characters just to be able to prototype the game mechanics. It became so obvious to us the need that we had to be able to stand out. One, to be able to identify each other. Uh, as a team, and actually crews themselves, like we have a special social structure in Knockout City, which is our riff on clans, uh, we call them crews. Crews can uniform similarly. They can have common back of the jacket logos, for example. Uh, and uh, you really want to stand out to be able to say, okay, this is my team, this is my crew, but here I am as an individual as well. And the modifications, customizations are just really crazy. So we have outfits, we have body types, we have heads, we have visors, we have hair, uh, but we also have cool things like gliders. And those are just the accoutrements. Now, all of these are cosmetic only, so there's no skill impact. We always keep the play flat. So it's all about the individual and the team skill and not about the unlocks for the actual gameplay outcomes. But we have all of those that are sort of like how you look but then we also have a bunch of expression type of custom, uh, customizations, knockout effects, ultimate throw holograms, taunts, uh, all kinds of things like that to be able to just express yourself on the field, sometimes cheekily, sometimes cute, sometimes rude. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's actually loads of fun to be able to unlock and then express yourself in those ways. Okay. Well, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it plays off for if it pays off for him. I totally blew the dodgeball line. Doesn't matter because mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't be listening to this. You should be playing Knockout City. It's available now. Part of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. It is optimized for Xbox Series S and Series X. Guha Bala, thank you so much for joining us. Very interested in trying this out. And I know that you all have a lot of cool things planned for the community over these first 10 days of launch. So if uh, you're a solo player, you're looking to play with the devs, if you're looking to find new folks, this is a great time to get involved. Back to you, mm -hmm. hey, Rebecca, well, have... Larry, take it home. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to thank you, Jeff. And uh, I really hope uh, all the players on Xbox have an awesome time. We just have uh, loads of programming in Knockout City Live uh, ready from the get-go on the 21st when we launch. Awesome. And that is today. So have at it. Rebecca, Larry, take us home. Thanks, Tim, Ben, and Guha for those interviews. Awesome to learn about Psychonauts and Knockout City. Um, speaking of Knockout City, that's yes. actually going to be one of... Uh, yeah, that's going to be one of the new titles that has just arrived on Xbox Game Pass. Um, some others that have arrived on Xbox Game Pass, uh, there are actually three of these that wait I think minute, would Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did we just drift oh, into sorry. the news section seamlessly? Is that what you did? 
Cause I, I'm trying. Because that was smooth. I'm trying it out. That, that was quite smooth. I mean, it was smooth. <laughs> let me let me bring up the ticker here to at least support you. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, by all Thanks. means. All right. So uh, there are a few of these titles on Xbox Game Pass that I'm kind of thinking my dad would really be into. So one is Snow Runner. If you've ever wanted to uh, play ice road truckers in real life, uh, try that, that out. I'm sorry. Is that something some... your dad likes? I'm curious to what that comment was about. <laughs> Yeah, so so these three, so Snow Runner, Man Eater, and the Catch Carp and Course Fishing. I think my dad, these games were designed for like older dads. Um, so Snow Runner is what I mentioned. You're driving the you know kind of heavy duty trucks through the wilderness, really challenging climates. Man Eater, you're surviving. I think it's kind of like uh, what's what's the Bear Gorilla show, Man versus Wild. Right, right, it's right. It's that, but a video game. Uh, and then the catch, carp and course fishing. I don't think I need to tell you what that is, but my dad would love it. So uh, some exciting, maybe these are coming out in advance of Father's Day. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Are, are you, do, do, did you go fishing with your dad when you were little or even now? Oh, yeah. Good. I kind of joked that my dad wanted a son. So like I always helped him fix cars and throw the football around and <laughs> go fishing. And, oh, that's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I mean, at the time I was kind of like, I don't want to do this. I want to watch TV, but now I'm glad that we had that time. So it's all good. And does your, and does, do, do you, is he very excited that his daughter now works on Minecraft? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's been telling people that I do uh, marketing for Xbox or I sell Xboxes right. for a very long time, <laughs> but now that it's Minecraft and now that there are some like examples on the internet, it's a little bit easier for him to talk about my work. Fair um, point. But yeah, Fair they're point. very happy. Fair point. Anyway, go yeah. ahead. You've got more news. Yes. Um, all right. Other titles coming out on Xbox Game Pass this week. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies, Battle for Neighborville, Peggle 2, Conan Exiles, which is also optimized for Xbox X and S. Uh, I'm peggling out over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have Fusion Frenzy, Joyride Turbo, Mech Warrior 5, Slime Ranchers, Lost Us, Force 3, and then also Secret Neighbor, which I'm interested in, but I don't know if I could actually play it. Um, did, did you try? You... Did you play Hello Neighbor? I did. It was it was very stressful. Do you, do mm -hmm. you so if yeah. you remember what this is about? There's different. I only played like the first two levels, but you have to like sneak into a neighbor's house and like and like you know do do a couple of tasks, and uh, you know and then if they hear you, they come running after you. It's very stressful, Rebecca. It's very stressful. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah, I I actually tried playing it a few times. Um, the first time it was at night, and I was like, nope, no more. Um, and then I tried it the next day during the day, and even that, it was too much. Like, is it like I, is it like Resident Evil? I mean, that's that's kind of a next level, but you know, hello neighbors. Honestly, you see him. Yeah, you see him sprinting toward you, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I could handle Secret Neighbor, but maybe maybe I'll try it out with a friend just for just for kicks and giggles. Yeah, yeah, that's fun, Secret Neighbor. Um, so let's see some other things coming out this week. Uh, Destiny 2 Season of the Splicer. Good time to hop back in. Gears 5 Operation 7. Uh, and then Minecraft also released the How to Train Your Dragon DLC, which I've heard really good feedback for so far. It's pretty fun. So very this is detailed. based on, based on um, the, uh, the, the franchise, the How to Train Your Dragon movie franchise, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was a big fun. partnership that we did with, I think it's DreamWorks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see. And then also uh, we have free play days now through Sunday for uh, Xbox Live Gold, Xbox Game Pass members. So if you want to try out Gears 5 or F1 2020, um, and then that's a good segue into uh, we also revealed some new details around F1 2020. 21, <laughs> right. which if you pre-order, you get three days of early access ahead of uh, it's releasing July 16th. Um, and then the pre-order, uh, the deluxe version also comes with a bunch of different content, the icon packs. So you can play as like Ayrton Senna um, and it's optimized for Xbox Series X and S, which is very cool. Um, and then something a little bit more uh kind of feel good so yesterday was also global accessibility awareness day yep. um well, we depending launched upon when a ton you're of listening to this it was like it's like may right, 19th right? right or may 20 may 20th may 20th is it may 20th yep. yeah may 20th um which i'm wearing my xbox adaptive controller oh, pin in on, celebration my adaptive controller. I, uh, yeah i'll wear the pin too <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> Wow, that's cool. I didn't know you had one of those. Yeah, I have one. It's these are these are one of the great these are just a great device 
And, you know, I have friends that come over and they're like, you know, whether, if, you know, I always want to have something. What is that? that? <laughs> that's, uh, they, well, that not only that, but also so they can have something to play. If there's some people maybe can't play games yeah. and this is easy to do. So, and also maybe, you know, eventually I'll, my daughter will be able to use this maybe because just, you know, when she's little, she's got two, mm. two little things to do something here. So, so it's, uh, it's yeah, like, very yeah, cool. Yeah. Anyway, so go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so anyway, so Xbox, yeah, we have a lot of good activities and different ways that we're trying to make gaming more accessible. Um, so first is we launched the Xbox Accessibility Insider League so that people who self-identify as having a disability can provide feedback on their experiences. Um, engineer, engineers and developers will get that directly. Um, and developers can also share content with the community in the Xbox Accessibility Insider League and get their feedback, which is really cool. And also, um, don't, just a quick reminder, have, last week we had uh, someone on from our team talking about the Mental Health Awareness Month at Xbox, which is now, and then, of course, is this as well. So tune into the previous episode, number 746, if you want to check that out. Yeah, May is, May is a busy month, but there's a lot of really good initiatives going on. Yeah. Um, a couple other really exciting things. So now we also have speech to text and text to speech for party chat. So if you're hard of hearing or if you're not able to verbally speak, now you can still get involved in party chat and have that two-way communication, which feels like something small, but that I, I feel like that would go a long way for people who who want that. So I'm very excited. Um, yeah. We also have a ton of different games. <laughs> yeah, we have a ton of different games that uh, we have a game collection on Xbox Wire that we recommend if you uh, you know are looking for games with particular accessibility features or solutions. Um, and then Gears Five, Minecraft, and State of Decay uh, also had some new announcements around accessibility and things that they are making available for players this week. Um, and last, if you want to donate, um, you can use your Microsoft rewards. So you know, not taking any money out of your own pocket. The rewards you earn for interacting with different Microsoft programs and Xbox programs. Uh, you can donate those to Able Gamers and Warfighter Engaged, and Microsoft is going to match those donations this, this month, which is awesome. That is fantastic. Um, yeah. And then last but not least, today we have some exciting game releases. Sorry, I know there's a lot of news this week. A lot of news. That's why, uh, Jeff, Jeff you know, let's be clear, Jeff couldn't handle it. He had to take the week off, so, <laughs> so you're doing a great job, Rebecca. Thank you. That's why, yes. Um, let's see. So t starting today, Scarlet Nexus demo is available. It's uh, a new action JRPG from Bandai Namco. Uh, think sci-fi sci anime art. Um, I was actually kind of surprised when I saw the characters. Like, it really does look like anime. Like, I don't know. Like, it's the, the art style is really interesting. Um, I would definitely recommend checking it out. And it's also going to be optimized for Series X and S. Uh, so that will be a really good demo for uh, if you have the newer consoles i'm looking at it um, i'm looking at it Russ. right here there there yeah. it is on the store yeah, right show it to us <laughs> go mm -hmm. ahead I'll, I'll let you continue oh, look oh yeah look at that style yeah see isn't it because i it's what's the there's another there's another anime that it kind of reminds me of i can't remember the name of it but it's like it's like mecha warriors in space and you're fighting some aliens i watched it like a very long time ago but it was really good it's kind of like it's anime but it's not like the seamless cartoony right. style so it's it's pretty neat i would i would check it out um, and then also today, Rust Console Edition is launching, um, which is developed by Double Eleven, which if you haven't heard of them, they're, they contributed to Goat Simulator and also Minecraft Dungeons. Uh, and Rust will, uh, the Console Edition has crossplay, so you can play with your friends on PC as well. I'm looking, Looks I'm showing cool. you right here. I actually here. haven't played Rust. I haven't either. Have you played this, Larry? I think, I think I played it when it was in game preview a long time ago. Because it looks familiar, mm -hmm. but you know, after a while, so everything kind of flows together. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> so I yeah. think I, I think I have played this, but I, it was certainly a very, 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 very early version. Yeah, so. I'm I'm tempted to check it out. It looks it looks pretty cool. And every time I go to my friends list and see what my friends are playing, like I have seen a lot of people playing Rust, or like my friends on Discord too. Right. Um. And and then last, and what I'm definitely going to download is Wild at Heart which is launching today into Xbox Game Pass. If you have Xbox Game Pass, you can try it out for free. Uh, Wild at Heart is another one. I think it's I think it's the games with really unique art style that get me, like un unique art and a really good story, uh, which is why I'm excited to try Spirit Fairer. But then Wild at Heart also looks really cool. Um, I love puzzle games too. I'm looking for it right now. <laughs> yeah, show it to us. Oh, it's actually, it's not, it's not up here yet. It's unfortunate. That one's not up here yet, but it will be out by the time this, uh, oh, okay. this podcast airs. So that's the good news. So that's cool. a lot, that's a lot of right. news this week. Yes. 
I think that that is the end of the news, actually. Well, thank you, thank you for uh, thank you for all that news. You did great work there. So Jeff, I'm sh- Jeff should be pleased. I don't know where he is. I've got to find him. He just kind of vanished. He's he's a busy. <laughs> Jeff busy man. should be shaking. He's, His he's, position he's... is threatened. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, if you if you like what you saw with Rebecca reading the news, hit the comments, the like, the subscribe, ring the bell. You know, you know the whole the whole dance. It's not a competition. It's but... not. No, no, it's not a comp- <laughs> It's not a competition. But if you like what you heard, uh, anyway. So yeah, we've got uh, we've got thank. We've got thank you for all the guests that came in for those interviews this week as well. And thank you to Rebecca for kind of fill. I, I want to say filling in for Jeff because, uh, you know, you kind, of, you kind of did a great job with that. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Go orange. Yeah. Well, and go at go orange. So we'll be back next week. Uh, Rebecca and I, and hopefully Jeff, uh, we'll be back next week and then we'll, uh, we'll have some more interviews for you and a great, great uh, bunch of other stuff. If you like what you heard, make sure you let us know, leave the feedback positive or negative down in the YouTube comments or, uh, you know, send us, hit us up on Twitter. You can find me at Major Nelson and then Rebecca's is on screen right now. Rebecca's one of the people mm-hmm. I follow. By the way, sorry about that, following you on Twitter. I, <laughs> you probably get a lot of noise now, don't you? No, it's good. I like it. Give me the noise. I don't tweet a lot, but I'm on Twitter a lot. So. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true. You're also... But, but, and I'm, I'm at Rebecca underscore Y-E-U-N, Rebecca Yoon. Yep, so. there, there it is, right right there on the screen. And uh, and you're also on Instagram as well, if people want to follow you there. I don't know. Is your, is your account private? I don't remember. Yep. <laughs> no, it's it's public. Same username. Okay, there you go. All right. We will see it's you next. It's mostly Pumba. <laughs> it's mostly Pumba. Well, we'll look forward to getting some Pumba action over there on, on Instagram and, and on Twitter. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks for your time this week, by the way. I know you're busy. You're work, yeah. working, working on all that Minecraft stuff. So thank you for your time. We'll be back next week. And until then, have fun, play fair, file feedback, and let us know what you think of the show. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>